recording of how attacking works and sort of general message passing in um, Erlmud. So I'm using Sketchpad here to draw, and this is a graph that I've drawn of processes in Erlmud. Each, every object in Erlmud is a process. Everything. Exits are processes, rooms are processes, enemies are processes, items are processes, everything. Even attacks are processes. So how does attacking work? When somebody sends in an attack command, um, it'll first be an, an attempt. And all the messages that go around uh, are attempts. And until attempt, an attempt is ratified, everybody says it succeeds, then nothing happens. Once it succeeds, then the six, anybody who's subscribed to that as it's flown by, you know, you see an attack happening on another player in the room, your process might say, hey, I want to know if that attack succeeds because if he's one of the people in my party, then I want to attack whatever's attacking him. So let me know if that happens, or let me know if it fails. So somebody says, I want to do an attack, and they give a player, uh, usually from the web, and they give a, um, um, this could be a script or, you know, any kind of thing that causes an attack to happen, a player and a target, which would be a string. So it comes to the player, and the player sends, um, uh, as soon as the player sees that, it starts up an attack process. And then it tells the attack process to attack, and it passes itself, uh, its own PID. You can see all these little numbers here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are all the PIDs, the process IDs for these processes. You can pass a message to any process in Erlang if you know its process ID or what it's registered as. So right now we'll just use process IDs. So this, this player says, hey, I starts up an attack process, says, hey, take my PID, which is 1, and go attack um, something called Pony. And so attack will send out a message and that message will propagate through the graph as far as, right now, um, uh, one room away from, the, from its, uh, itself. So it'll cross one exit maximum. So it won't go over here, and it won't go over here. These, these orange things with labeled E are exits. So it can go into this first room, and then that, uh, that attempt will get flagged with the room. And then if it ever tries to go through um, an exit that isn't connected to that room, it'll stop. So it'll go from this room to this room because that exit is connected to this room, but it won't go into this room because that exit is not connected to this room. So it sends out an attack to say attack this the, something with the name Pony. Well, once that that'll go to everybody throughout all these rooms, and let's just add another player. Let's do dark blue. Let's say there's another player here, and he is he has ID. Uh, what are we up to? Nine, ten, eleven. Say so he has ID twelve. Um, so everybody's going to see this message, and then. Eventually, AI, the AI process, number two, is going to see Pony and say, oh, that's me. So he's going to modify that message. Instead of saying, yes, that message succeeds, he's just going to resend a different message and put himself, number process number two, in that message. Now the, now the message is attack with attack process 11, player process 1 as the, as the source, and, and AI process 2 as the, um, as the target. So now attack will have all the information it needs to actually run the attack. Now it'll say, well, let's see if player actually manages to hit AI Pony. We'll do a calc hit attempt. So it sends that off to everybody that's within currently two rooms. So it'll send it to this player, to, and the player will send it to all its items. Every, everything that gets the message will send that message off to everything it's connected to. So the message will work its way all through the graph until either somebody fails it or somebody changes it to a new message. So it starts out with a default one right now. And if it gets through all these things and nobody has any effect on whether or not a player can hit, not the player's stats, not the player's items, not the target itself, like the target itself may have an item, and let's do an item here, that is armor. Uh, let's smell the right color. Uh, it's this one, eggplant, maybe, yeah, it's this one. Oh, it's just fine. Let's say that. Let's say armor is has ID, it's another process, and it has um, ID 13. And say the when this one sees that uh, message, it's going to say, "No, no, I'm going to I'm going to minus five from your ability to hit um, because I know that my owner is this is the target of that hit, so I'm going to subtract some." But if it comes back to the the uh, attack with greater than zero, then that attack exceeds. The attack will continue and say, "Okay, now I need to calculate damage." So it'll go to the player, all the player's items, the rooms, any players in adjacent rooms, anything. And this player may have, I mean, it, it goes on and on and on. If this player has um, an item, this player's item may affect the attack of this player onto this player, even though he's in the next room. So that's just up to the MUD, um, the MUD uh, designer. 
uh, but it's just it gives tons of possibilities. So if the damage comes back and it's greater than zero, then that attack exceeds. Then we send out another message. So the first we had a message to um, find the uh, or rather to create the uh, uh, to just start the attack with the player and the attack. So start the attack. And then we had one to find the target. And then we had one, um, and these are all going out all through the graph. Luckily, Erlang is wicked fast. Um, find the target, and then we said uh, calculate the hit, and then we said calculate the damage, count damage, and then we said now we have to say now apply the damage, and that should succeed currently. If it fails, um, I don't have any workaround. I don't have any. It'll just the attack will just stop. Um, so you can't really just block damage just yet. Um, you have to do it when the damage is being calculated, not when it's trying to be applied. And then the AI will check once that damage succeeds. So we go attempt to do damage. This thing will see it and say, okay, I need to apply that damage to myself. And then it says, if I'm dead, then I need to send a message to the attack saying I'm dead. And attack will listen for any messages coming from, um, it won't come directly. The message, this one will send it out to everybody that it knows. And that message will propagate through the graph until it hits attack. And attack, that message will look like, you know, uh, let's just do, it'll be like, I am, or am dead, and it'll say uh, the attack is 11, and the player was 1, and the, I am 2, and this attack will be listening because it knows it's 11. So it'll be listening for att um, messages that come in for attack 11, and then it'll say, okay, well, this matches, and you're saying I'm dead. So it, now it knows it won't continue to attack because this thing has died. So, very complicated. So apply damage, and then if, and then maybe, um, maybe die. So these are all the messages that, that get blasted through the graph to do an attack, but it gives us tons of flexibility. So, okay, that's how attacks work. I'll probably put up another video um, showing the code and how um, objects communicate uh, along the graph and whatnot. Thanks for watching.